Today I'd like to talk about how to manage your developers using the Layer 7 API portal. Now as a business manager, I have a role on the portal. I'm just going to go ahead and log in as that business manager. And you can see I've come to my dashboard. Uh, it says, welcome to me, business manager. And I have a number of areas of functionality that I can access straight from my dashboard. One of the key things here is the tasks menu on my dashboard. It tells me that I have a pending account. I click on that and I'm brought to the Manage Pending Accounts page where I can see a new registration is currently available. And I can either accept or reject them based on their information that they provide. But what I really want to talk about today is managing those organizations. So if I had accepted that new registrant, they would appear in this list here and I'd be able to go ahead and work with them and understand how they are interacting with the API portal. So you can see here I've got a number of organizations. Uh, users associated with those organizations is also displayed here. In many cases, it's only a single developer associated with this organization. In other words, maybe it's a guy working in his basement uh, to develop a new application against the APIs. Or in some cases, I also have organizations that contain three or four different people. In other words, larger port partner organizations uh, that have multiple developers working to create new applications. So the API portal can accommodate both lone developers and larger organizations. The way that I distinguish between those organizations is through assigning plans. I have over here account plans, just click on that, and I can create as many account plans as I want. Out of the box though, I've got, I'm given this bronze account plan. The bronze account plan is what's handed out by default. Anyone coming in, signing up, brand new to the API portal is given the bronze account plan. But I can also go ahead and assign them a gold plan or if they're an internal developer, maybe I've developed a man, an account plan that uh, allows me to assign them to an internal developer group. Let's go back to my organizations and show you how that's done. So in this case, I can go ahead and click on account plan and just choose one of those that I have currently available and then I can assign that to them. And the plan will then be updated. In most cases, I'm just gonna leave them as a bronze account plan. Uh, here, maybe I've got a couple of um, partners that I work with. I've already upgraded them to a gold plan. And because they've been upgraded and they're a good partner of mine, I've actually assigned them an account rep and that can easily be done by just selecting an account rep from here and clicking the assign button and it gets to update that account rep. So you can imagine if I've got five or 10,000 different organizations that I'm working with as a business manager, it would be unwieldy to work with all of those. So we give you the ability to assign different organizations to account reps. When the account rep logs in, they'll be able to handle all the interactions with the organizations they've been assigned. So that's manage organizations. The other thing I can talk about is assigning private APIs. So in some cases, I'll have a private API that I want an organization to help me test, or maybe I just want to give them access to it. I can go ahead and click on one of those APIs, click the add button and apply it. That organization will now have access to that API. Now one of the key things I can do here with these organizations and the fact that I've tiered them into different plans is uh, manage them over time. So let's say I'm a large US based retailer and it's coming up towards Black Friday. Now I know that most of my traffic is actually going to be generated in store, not online. So I want to be able to free up bandwidth to have my people in store be able to help the customers uh, access that product catalog and identify their purchases. So in that case, what I want to do is take all these low level partners, these bronze account plan, uh, low tier uh, organizations and suspend those organizations for Black Friday. Now, I don't want to do that just out of hand. I probably want to go into the forums here under recent announcements and make a 
announcement, something like this, Black Friday blackout, to tell them that there's an upcoming service interruption. So give them some heads up warning. I can also go into my dashboard under the messages widget and create a new message that I can send to all portal users, letting them know the same thing. Now that'll just appear like these messages straight on their dashboard, so I can be assured that they'll be warned of something like this is upcoming. Going back to my organizations, come Black Friday, what I want to be able to do is just take that filter and apply it to all the bronze account plans, sweep them all up, and apply an action like suspend. And I can apply that across the board. This will affect all my bronze account plan members and suspend all their applications. None of their traffic will work. That frees up bandwidth for my on-floor people. Now, come Cyber Monday, I can go ahead and click unsuspend and this will unsuspend all those organizations that will be able to get access once more. Now that means the gold plan members were still live. They were filtered out of that, so my good partners will still be able to access those back ends. So one last thing to talk about for business managers is analytics. So I want to be able to check on how my organizations, the developers, how their applications are working. So I might want to pick one of them and one of their applications and understand what their usage is like. Let's go ahead and grab some data from the back end. There we go. You can zoom in on this data, drag that zoom in around to understand how it's been progressing over time. I can get an idea of the number of hits, API throughput for this application, the number of successful transactions versus the number of errors here. I can also look at their latency to help them understand how that experience is working for their users. So I can zoom in on these peaks here to understand that there was a almost a three second uh, millis or 335 millisecond latency here. Most of that was in the gateway when it was trying to process that request. Some of it was in the back end. So I can help them understand and troubleshoot uh, where this is happening for them. 